good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our regular scheduled council meeting for October 16, 2023, 6 p.m. And thank you for joining us, audience members, uh, administrators, council, and uh, those watching on YouTube. Uh, Ms. Berner, if you would call the roll, please. Yeah, Mayor Lowry. Here. Vice Mayor Grimm. I'm here. Councilman Bond. Here. Councilwoman Eggleston. Here. Councilman Cook. Here. Councilman Lindsay. Here. Councilman Roadwald. Here. Seven members present. Thank you. Uh, tonight's invocation will be done by Chief Trustee. Father Lord, we thank you for the day and all thy many blessings and many favors. Thank you for the chance, Lord, to be in this meeting. Please let thy perfect will be done. Bless our first responders, our troops, and their families. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Need action on the regular scheduled council meeting for October 2nd? So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by Ms. Hagelston. Any discussion, council? And when you're ready, Ms. Burner. Okay. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Minutes accepted 7 0. Thank you. All right. Moving on to communications. Uh, Ms. Greta Mayer, CEO of the Mental Health and Recovery Board of Clark County, Ohio, is here tonight to talk with us. So thank you for coming. Uh, if you could uh, please go to the podium, there'd be a, micro a microphone there for you. And I don't have to do anything to it. You can hear me okay? We can hear you. Okay. I apologize. I'm getting over a little cold, as so many are, so I'm You're a little okay. bit stuffy tonight. No problem. But it's truly a pleasure to address you, Mayor, and City Council members of New Carlisle, um, to just share a little bit about the um, renewal levy we have on the ballot serving Clark County residents, which includes all Clark County residents. We are a mental health recovery board, which is a division of local government. We're unique in that we have three counties that we support, Clark County, Greene County, and Madison County. But all the levies that we run are separate. Um, so the Clark County dollars follow the Clark County residents. So if a new Carlisle person needed to get care at the inpatient unit at Mental Health Services in Springfield, the dollars would, would cover the cost of that for them to seek the care there. If mental health services didn't have any beds available and someone needed to go to Dublin Springs, for example, or somewhere south um, in Cincinnati to get care, the dollars, dollars follow the Clark County resident to acquire that care when it's not available in our area. Um, so again, it's my pleasure to serve as the executive director, um, the chief executive officer of Mental Health Recovery Board. And it is on the ballot. If you haven't voted early already, which uh, just started, um, it is um, important for you to know that it's a straight renewal, no new taxes. And there's a variety in your packets. You should have received uh, a listing, and I have copies here for the audience if they'd like to see it, um, a listing of all the providers that receive funding from us. So we're a, a planning, funding, and monitoring board. Our sole purpose is not to deliver care, but to ensure that the care you're getting as a Clark County resident is the kind of care that meets a quality standard. And that we know that when we invest in these services, people get better. It's about one in five people have a diagnosable mental health condition at any point in time in their lifetime. Most, uh, about half of the cases um, develop at age 14. So young people, and we're hearing this more and more, we recognize um, these things bubbling up and maybe some signs and symptoms of mental health concerns um, in our young people. And so we do a lot of in working with schools and working with other partners um, to help get services to them. So we're, we're looking at ways we can go after state grants and federal grants so we can keep our local dollars of last resort. So that's how we can keep it as a straight renewal, no new taxes for this um, 1.5 or 1.65 mil levy. Great. So I didn't know if you had any questions for me. I know that was very quick and a broad overview, but yeah. I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Council, any questions? I have found people are more than willing to support a lot of things, like you, like seniors, like fire and EMS. Yes. And don't want to take anything for granted, but yeah, this is something we need to support. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I wanted to let you know, so we're just a small team or administrative body, so I'm one of eight staff members, 
and we have a 12 member board um, so we have a larger board than we have staff serving uh, the three counties and Emily Carter I don't know if you know Carter's junk door she is employed by us she's been with us as an assistant director of finance as a new Carlisle grown grown up here and a resident so it's wonderful to have someone um, from this area as a staff person yes. on our board so we're trying to get more involved in doing um, local things here um, at New Carlisle and making sure we have a presence so that people know how to access care because that's always the hardest part but working with our first responders is a huge um, partnership and commitment that we have and doing trainings and so on so interested in your feedback thank you for that thank you Mr. <clears throat> Like you said, I do have a question, and, it may, and you may not be able to answer it because you, you're kind of touched on. You guys don't provide the service; you help them find. Yes. But I st you probably still have a statistic. I'm just curious. I mean, I've heard this before: is w mental health issues at, at teenager ages? I'm assuming has skyrocketed rocketed since like I was a kid and you were. In yes, high school, absolutely. Correct? Yes. What, what, what do you? What is the? What does the research say the cause of it is? Home life. Mm -hmm. Uh, parenting, uh, social media, things of that nature? Great question. I think it's a combination of a lot of things. And right. I think we're better able to identify things that we may have just kind of brushed off as like maybe a behavior or an attitude problem. I think we better understand some of the drivers behind it. It's not to say that teenagers don't have attitudes and right. you know, hormonal changes and things like that um, to complicate the mix. But I think, you know, the, Things have increased, and, and kids have access now to things that we never had access to. And I'm even thinking college. You know, I, I went to Wittenberg here, and that's what brought me down to this area from a very rural area, Berlin, Ohio, is where I'm from, Northeast Ohio, Amish country, if you know where that is. Um, and so coming down here and being in school, I was at the big city, you know, coming here yeah. compared to what I was used to. We didn't have cell phones, you know, we didn't have, I mean, internet and email was just starting, um, you know. So I think kids nowadays have so much at their fingertips that they, it's really hard for them. Their brains are still developing till age 27, mm -hmm. 30, you know. So to understand their own, um, you know, who they are and what they want to become, and then they have all these. Um, things that parents are doing their very best to you know protect them and yeah. give them good guidance but it's like we haven't been able to keep up with the times i don't know if anyone watched 60 minutes last night but uh, anyways they were talking about some of this stuff on the show and there's often programs so trying to educate you know there is some some statistics and research around facebook and the hours of time spent on facebook and how that increases rates of depression and anxiety not just with young people but adults as well yeah. so sometimes all that stuff online and being disconnected from people like us face to face it's wonderful to be here in person with you i think we have to find ways to connect you know to help us make sure young people know how important it is to connect with other young people and get support from healthy um, adults and each other thank you any other questions Anyone in the audience? No? All right. Well, thank you very much for taking time to come out. We really appreciate it. I'll leave my card behind and yes. these fact sheets. <coughs> Please thank do. Thank you again for the opportunity. I really appreciate it. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Moving on. Uh, the Brubaker Alley uh, dedication. Is that something you're going to be going over, Mr. Kitko? Mm -hmm. And I apologize. Um, just in case you guys haven't figured out, Randy couldn't be here tonight. He's feeling, not feeling well. so. So for, uh, for the Brubaker Alley dedication, uh, the information is the Brubaker Road dedication, uh, hearing dates today, Smith Park Shelter House. Uh, the case is the dedication approval will recommend the same for city council. Uh, planning board voted four to zero to approve without modification at their October 10th meeting. Property location is at Brubaker and Mill Roads, which is not too far from the, all the Little League uh, baseball fields. The uh, owner is Hensley Limited Family Partnership. And the exhibits and attachments that I have um, to city council and staff report, uh, the details of the case, Brubaker Drive dedication, uh, the use for the legal description, boundary lines, dedication size, among others. And there's a satellite imagery of the area to be recognized. Um, staff notes, it's a very brief and straightforward case. This area will be used for the Brubaker Drive entrance to new residential development named the reserves at, on Honey Creek. This area and entrance have been previously discussed and approved on by both the planning board and city council via the D.R. Horton preliminary plan and plat hearings. Staff recommendation is to approve the previously discussed Brubaker dedication to facilitate, to facilitate the project moving forward. And in your package you have the, um, basically, which is the, um, the official location and right-of-way lines and then the imagery on the back side uh, not too far from Hensley 
and the um, the Brubaker Field and the apartments where the imagery shows that area. And then the picture here, which is basically the southernmost entrance of the future development. All right, Council, any questions for Mr. Kitko on this? Yes. Mr. Vice Mayor. This isn't like transferring it to the city. It's just Cor correct. Hans it Kinsley still on it, but it be, will be used for that access, right? Let me make sure I get this uh, understood. Yeah, they're yeah they're dedicating it straight to basically uh, Dr. Horton um, from from them because we are we already have easements because our water and sewer run through there, but we won't have ownership. We have we'll, we'll still maintain our uh, utility easements, but this will be for Dr. Horton and not a city owned property. We'll be maintaining the, the street when the road goes in. Then we'll get dedicated the roadway. Yes. Okay. I'm done. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? All righty. So do you need action on this? I do. I need a um, motion to accept. Yep. So I'll move. Second. Did you have something? No. Okay. So motion by Mr. Cook, second by Ms. Eggleston. What's that? Either one is me and Dale. Oh, okay. I only heard you, so we'll go with you. You heard Peggy Ooh, over Dale? I heard Peggy. <laughs> I'm sorry. You heard Peggy? <laughs> we'll get Peggy. Okay. I heard you. Sorry. All right. First was Mr. Cook, correct? Correct. All right. Um, Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. That is accepted 7-0. All right. Thank you very much. And moving on to the city manager's report. Thank you, Mayor, members of council, members of the public. Uh, as stated, Randy is out tonight, so he'll be filling in uh, for tonight's meeting. And under the first uh, departmental report is the police report. There were 479 calls taken. Uh, there were 40 reports. There were 90 assists, five criminal arrests, one felony arrest, three misdemeanor arrests, one warrant, and 58 traffic stops. Traffic warning, <coughs> excuse me, uh, 40 traffic warnings. 18 moving citations, 1,870 business checks, 19 code enforcement follow-ups, and nine traffic crashes. <laughs> that was uh, prepared by Sergeant Ronnie Lehman. Thank you. Any questions on that? All right. And moving on to the fire and EMS report uh, presented by Chief Steve Trustee. Mayor, Council, Citizens. For the month of September, the New Carlisle Fire Division responded to 115 EMS calls in the city, five in Elizabeth Township. The division responded to 10 fire-related calls in the city, zero in Elizabeth Township. We had four calls answered mutually aided by Pike Township, Bethel Park, due to <coughs> Medic 52 being on a response. We answered three mutual aid calls for Pike Township and five mutual aid calls for Bethel Park. We're still doing hydrant flushing. We are now in the, in the last section of the city, Area D. Uh, we still have three smoke alarms. They're actually combination smoke and uh, seal detectors uh, free for this, our citizens. Just call the station or either stop by the station and we'll either get you, give them to you or we'll actually come out, have the crews come out and uh, put them in for you. And that's it. All right. Thank you, Chief Council. Any questions for Fire Chief? Thank you very much, Chief. We appreciate it. I would just like to add on that uh, reports kind of him, but we work hand in hand with the tornado siren. Uh, we just had our tornado sirens do our test on that first Monday of the month, but also we noticed the one on Walsh Drive was not spinning. It was sounding, but it wasn't rotating. Um, Federal Signal will be replacing the uh, rotational bearing free. It's, it's a warranty item. So that could be within weeks to a couple months it's a secondary crew that comes out and gets us but it still operates and he said it could rotate one time and not rotate the next right but i just want to let everybody know that we are aware of it and it is getting repaired right. uh, moving on to our finance report presented presented by miss harris our finance director thank you mr kitko mayor council and members of the public this is for our september financials our revenue that we took in for the month of September was $573,762.45. Our 
Our expenditures were $1,077,679.05. Some of the difference in the uh, larger payment in September um, include debt payment, a semi-annual debt payment of $112,000. And then we had the Falcon and Scott paving and Main Street cur curbs and gutters with infrastructure. That came in at $267,000. So that is, uh, comes up with that larger amount for expenditures. For a year to date of revenue, we'll go back there of $7,970,653.02. And our expenditures to date, year to date, are $6,959,256.53. Our beginning cash balance at the beginning of the year was $7,510,472.46. And at the end of September, we are at $7,656,767.07. The bank statement, all the bank accounts have been balanced and reconciled for the month of September. <coughs> Going into our income tax collection, we have taken in for September $126,544.27 with CCA, and we're still running about 5% in comparison with last year. On the mayor's court, their revenue for their court costs um, and fines, they took in for September $3,095 with a year-to-date of $39,248. And I do have some staff updates. Um, Colleen Ray was our utility clerk and she is now your new tax administrator. She's currently being trained by Becky Taylor Witt. So we are um, lucky enough to keep her for a few months part-time to get as much training and, and history over to Colleen. Colleen is also training our new utility clerk who has taken her position, and that's Sarah Wooden. So Colleen Ray's been a very busy lady. So we have the new utility clerk. We have still our central cashier, which is Angela, and our accounts payable of Victoria. And I do want to shout out again, we've been, it's been a hard couple months in our department and the staff has been courteous and respectful and we appreciate when customers do come in and ask us questions about anything, their water bill, zoning questions, information, what's going on in town, so we can help because that's what we're there for. Um, hours are 7 a.m. to 4, so we encourage people to come in if they have any questions on anything. And if there's any other questions I can entertain, that's my September finance report. All right, thank you. Council? Yes. Mr. Lindsay. Uh, Mrs. Harris, I know you probably told us before, but I don't remember because I'm old. Uh, quit laughing. <laughs> no, <here. laughs> the, uh, when will uh, the debt that we owe for infrastructure at Twin Creeks be paid off? Is that I can 25 pull, or 26? I need to pull a report and, and get that actual date. I don't know it off the top of my head, but I can have it for you shortly. Can you email that out to mm -hmm. council? For if, Queen for Creeks, you said? Queen Creeks, yes. Yeah. Sure. Anything else, Mr. Lindsay? No, I'm good. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Mr. Vice Mayor. Okay, I'm not a financial whiz, so I have questions. Statement of cash and revenue expenses says we have seven point six million. At Correct. the bottom uh, bank accounts it says we have eight point five million. So where we're at on the statement of cash, it has your in the first column is our beginning balance. That's what we started with January first. The revenue that we've collected to date, the seven million nine hundred and seventy, which is reflected in the graph above you. Same with the expenditures. Now what comes into the difference then when you subtract that out is your unexpended balance, the actual money in the account. And that is 8521868 and that balances with your bank statements. The rest are encumbrances and what they are is any purchase orders that we've already obligated to spend. It comes out of our useful, our budget amount, which is that statement of cash, but it hasn't hit the bank. So when you see a book balance in your September, the bottom where it has your checking accounts, that's our actual cash in the bank. So eight and a half million is without encumbrances and seven and a half million covers the encumbrances. 
Correct. So what we started with in the beginning of the year, what we've taken in and expended and what we're holding that we're obligated to pay would make an ending balance of 7656000 but our cash is actually 8.5. Is that explained yes, a little bit? Yes, ma'am. There's like actual and then there's budget. Yes, so. um, I, we have a number of investments. I'm assuming most of those are CDs. The um, like Star Ohio Center. is mainly CDs. We do have a money market. Um, that is the um, Park National MMA. Um, let's see, Star Ohio CD with the new one that we um, just did is the U.S. Bank Investment, and those are CDs. Okay. There's a little bit of paper in that. Um, that's being handled by Red Tree. That's the investment group that we've been working with to get that set up. So those are. Um, so far doing well. Star Ohio is still the best at five and a half percent interest on our collective amount in that in that account. So the, rest, the interest interest we get on these is outpacing inflation. <laughs> right now they're doing really, really good. Um, I don't know how Today long that's are. gonna <laughs> we to date have collected about a hundred and thirty thousand in interest wow. with our combined bank account. And just to give you an update, last year for the whole year was thirty-four thousand. In twenty twenty-one, it was three thousand and eighteen dollars. That's um, pretty much the bottom of it. Um, twenty twenty, sixteen thousand. So it it hit a low around COVID. Last year, it started coming up. The interest was going up to one and two percent, but it's five and a half. This whole year has just been exploding so we tried to lock money up in with u.s bank for the cds on longer term because we're hearing that eventually you know those rates are going to start going back down star high was a month to month it changes with you know whatever the current is but at least the cds will lock in so we're not losing value in our investments because of inflation we're not losing any value on our investments right now no so there's seven and a half million that's not all, not all readily liquid, right? It actually, because we obligated the column right next to it, the 865000 that is our good faith on our open purchase orders. So we only have the 7656 available. Well, I'm not talking about encumbrances. I'm talking about if we were to have to write out a check today for, say, $5 million. We don't have that. Yes, we have 8.5 in the bank liquid i mean everything other even your cds you can cash back you just take penalties that's how much actual cash we have in the banks do those penalties are they greater than the interest we would have earned you would get no interest I mean, earned on would this have earned in the cds depending upon if we had to cash it okay. star ohio would not have that the checking accounts the general pnc um the payroll account, none of those have any penalties. That's all liquid cash. Right. So just a couple CDs, would you would just not earn whatever it's making at the time we would cash them. Okay. I'm happy. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Move to accept the finance report. Second. Motion by Ms. Eggleston, second by Mr. Roadwell to accept the report. <clears throat> And when you're ready, Ms. Burner. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Rodolph. Yes. That is accepted 7 0. Mr. Mr. Mayor. Mayor's Corp. Second. Motion by Mr. Vice Mayor, second by Mr. Rodewall. I heard. Was it, was it Lindsay? Lindsay? Okay, Mr. Lindsay. Lindsay. All right. Councilman Rodold? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. And that's accepted 7 0. These are on it tonight. Thank you. We've been here before. Right. You're back to you, Mr. Pitko. Uh, All right, thank you. Uh, moving on to my report under Public Works Department. Um, we are gearing up for leaf pickup. The flyer with the map is on our uh, city's webpage. It was also delivered in the quarterly newsletter that came out with the uh, water bills. Uh, the water department uh, is currently working on the uh, old highest service um, pump building is an OPWC project. 
uh, I just went received an engineer's um, request for qualifications for the lead service and water main replacement project. Uh, Mr. Bridge and I will need to score that even though we only got one in, we still got to score it. And then I'll be bringing an agreement to council for the design of that project. Under the sewer department, currently clarifier number one and clarifier number two are being installed. Uh, one is done, the second one is being, uh, they're, they're probably about 20% uh, complete with the second one. Then we'll do a startup with the manufacturer and get those two online. So probably within the next couple weeks, those will be completely on, online. I just heard from the engineer on our plan expansion study. We're within about a month of getting it, uh, getting all the uh, it, stuff to us. We will sit down for, our, for probably our final meeting and then I'll uh, bring it to council and just kind of tell you kind of where, where we might be headed and stuff like that with the waste water department. Uh, Falcon Drive, as I had said, is complete and we were waiting on a few manholes to adjust. However, they started last Thursday adjusting those few manholes. They, I didn't get a chance to get out there today, so they may be done, but I'll be following up with that tomorrow. Uh, Fenwick Drive reconstruction phase two, Sturm construction began the project on October 6th. I expected to take about 30 days. Uh, just today they finished up all their dry wells, catch basins, most road crossings, and I think tomorrow they're getting ready to strip out the pavement and the base uh, in concrete uh, through that whole section. Uh, Carlisle Park Phase 1 Outdoor Enterprises LLC out of Tip City was awarded the contract through Clark County for our upgrade over there at Carlisle Park. Start date is to be determined. They, they have till I think the end of April to get it completed. They may just make this their early spring project because they think they're going to run into some asphalt issues for, on the court portion. Uh, Nature Works Grant um, I can cover it here. It's also in a discussion topics that uh, Mr. Bridget did email the original scope back to the grant coordinator and we're waiting to hear back on that. And the additional items, um, the big one is the 235 curve uh, study. It did kick off 920. I received late last week the um, report. I just got an email to Mr. Bridge this morning. So once we get it reviewed, then we'll bring it to council. And that is all I have under my report. Can I entertain any questions on that? Council, Ms. Eggleston. Mr. Pitko, I had spoke to Randy last week, I think. Um, I noticed there were two water, missing water caps on Main Street. Uh, where at? One is in front of 307. And that's in between the curb and the sidewalk. And then there's another one in the street in front of CVS. The one in front of uh, CVS is gas. Uh, it's not, I know which one you're talking about. Yeah, that is the gas company. They're well aware. They've marked their line multiple times. Um, not sure what they're doing. Uh, so that, that definitely is not ours. If it is between the curb and the sidewalk, I'll let the water department know it's a curb stop, a curb stop lid. Um, and what'd you say the address was for that? 307. South Main. Okay, got it. Anything else? Thank you, ma'am. All right, back to you for your other report. <coughs> Let's see. Under planning department uh, and code enforcement, your report is in there. Let me make sure it should be one, two, <coughs> two three, four. Oh, it's quite a few. Anyway, your mayor's, uh, your planning department report is in there. If you have any yep. questions about it, um, let me know or shoot me an email and I can pass that on to or our planning director. And then um, if we're good on the departmental reports, we'll move down to informational items. Yes, sir. Under discussion topics, updates, uh, Rumpke Waste Management. Let me go to Mr. Bridges, Texas. Let me just make sure I don't miss nothing. Uh, update for Rumpke Waste Management is they're still on schedule for mid-November for the Rumpke cart drop-off. Uh, he did make contact with the Vice President of Waste Management and will be making lead way with them to get a date for the removal of their carts and a list of their current customers and their service levels. Great. Uh, I already updated the NatureWorks grant, Rite Aid building. Um, 
the realtor who sold 101 South Main to us is looking into this potential future listing. They haven't um, heard much uh, information as of last week on that building. I did hear on the radio that they filed bankruptcy. Yes. So where, where that's headed, I'm not real sure. Uh, purchased by CVS has already been announced. The building? <laughs> no, right. Oh. Purchased by CVS. Well, the corporation. We, we need them across from each other like the old speedways. <laughs> 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 uh, second bullet point is uh, Heritage of Flight Festival and Parade. Just wanted to put a big thank you out to everyone. Um, I know it looked like the weather may not cooperate, but I think it did. Other than a little bit of rain, I think uh, all, every, all the committee, crews, you name it, all the participants that come. Um, I believe Chief had told me it was very limited on excitement from his side as well. So I think it was a, a great event. Uh, a lot of people come into town for that. And the parade route, I believe I really liked. I think my crews liked it. It made sense um, to have the vendors be able to set up. And two, when we were blocking roads, I did not have one person, and I haven't checked with all my crews, they come up and got irritated because they n could not get through. Because we actually had to shut down outside of our uh, the parade route. So I think it was the best route blocking parade that we've ever had. So I just wanted to pass it on. And then moving down to November 6th, regular meeting, Board of Zoning Appeals hearing, road width variance for Arbor Homes Development, Monroe Meadows, and then the City Council approval of the preliminary plat, uh, the Planning Board approved at their 10-10-23 meeting. Um, Addison, New Carlisle, State Route 235 cut through, uh, Mr. Bridge will be meeting with the landowners this week. I'm sure he'll be updating councils that proceeds. Um, Clark County Health update that was a, is attached. CPR training um, this Wednesday, <coughs> Wednesday and Friday. There are two times Wednesday and Friday for uh, staff that are getting CPR certified. If there's a member of council that would would like to get CPR certified, let me know. And I have a couple spots for um, a Wednesday afternoon. I have and I have some spots for Friday morning at 9 a.m. So if anybody's wanting to, uh, just let myself or let uh, Miss Harris know if you'd like to attend um, Wednesday at one or Friday at nine. This week. Uh, this week. And that's being put on by our own, um, one of our own fire department personnel, correct you? Yes. And moving on to city council, council retreat, city council discussion needed, meet the candidates. And is there any information on that? Mr. Cook. I have contacted uh, three of the five people that are in the running. Three of those five have uh, stated a weeknight will probably be best. There are two people that have not responded, <laughs> being Mr. Shammy and Charlotte Farley Seeger, I guess is her name. Neither one of them have responded either by email, phones, messages left on their phones. My feeling is just to go ahead, let's set a night and have it. Any particular night you're looking at, Mr. Cook? No, I think we need to do it sooner the better. Uh, do you have the shelter? Are you wanting to do it here? Probably here, yes. Do you have the availability? What have we got available? Do you have your... Um, Ms. Harris, you're pulling up on It's easier to read up on a laptop than it is on your phone with the, that calendar. So if you can give me a date, I can... Well... Most of We're gonna have days. Okay. What about next Monday night? All right, so next Monday is going to be the 23rd. It is open. Yeah. It's available? Yes. If that's all right with council, we'll shoot for, uh, what do you want to do at 7 o'clock? Sure. sure. 7 o'clock on the 23rd. Okay. Monday, 10, 23, 7 p.m., meet the candidates. I guess what I'll do is I'll talk to Mr. Bridge tomorrow and we'll try to put it up on the 
city's Facebook page, the city's web page, you know, try to you know, get some information out there. All right. I'll add it to the legal ad as well. I'm sorry? I'll add it to the legal ad. Okay, it'll well. be in the legal ad. All right. And, and then you'll reach out to those candidates. I'll reach out okay. again. Okay. How long do you think that'll last? I'm sorry? How long do you think it will last? I would say no more than probably an hour and a half at most. That's, I think, been the uh, situation in the past, about an hour, hour and a half. Of course, with only three people showing up, why it could be 10 minutes. Could be a little late. Do you want me in the Facebook page or whatever do seven to eight, seven to nine? Let's do say that. Seven, seven to eight? I'd do seven to nine just to cover yourself. Okay, seven to nine. Okay. All right, back to you, Mr. Kerr. Perfect. Um, additional discussion topics. Let me make sure there was nothing else left. Yep, got that. Uh, upcoming legislation, uh, liability insurance renewal uh, introduced tonight, vote on November 6th. Clark County EMA, uh, memorandum of understanding with fire and EMS department. Health insurance renewal, um, it will be, legislation uh, will be introduced. Ordinance to accept codification update will be coming around in the 2024 operating budget. First read on 1120 with the second being on December 4th. Mm -hmm. We also have a budget workshop on the 6th at 5 o'clock. And our budget work session is before the council meeting at 5. Thank you. At the next council meeting? Yeah, 5 o'clock. November 6th, 5 o'clock budget before council. Yep. And I think that is all I have on my manager's report. I can entertain any questions. Related to it, Council Mr. Vice Mayor. About ten years ago, a city manager told Council that the city would end the year with one hundred ninety-five dollars, and Council was shocked. A few uh, after, shortly after Randy was named manager, city manager, oh, we had very little cash cushion. After, shortly after Randy was named city manager, I had a conversation with him, and he said he would like to have at least. 500,000 on hand in case of emergency. Well, now we have $7,656,767 and seven cents. So he's probably ecstatic with that, with that cushion. I can probably help a little bit on that is when he was talking about, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but I believe the, that was just the general fund of having that where um, what Ms. Harris is talking about is all our funds, the city and everything we do, water, wastewater, park streets, general fund, that is everything. He wanted to have at least minimum half, or you know, 500,000 just in our general fund. And he has exceeded that um, the last couple of years with being over a million. So you'll see that in the budget. I know that's one part of it, but as far as the whole city is concerned, being over 7 million, um, yeah, that's awesome too. But well, I was, the oldest, the oldest uh, uh, finance report I've been able to find was from 2019. And at the time, we had $5,104,928.10. Yep. So over four years, we have grown an average of 500000 a year. Um, I know the city has been very reluctant to do anything, spend any money, because at one time we were that close to being put on fiscal watch. Um, again. Again. Now we're sitting pretty good. I think it's time we start using some of that for what it was designed for, uh, benefiting the residents. One thing I'd like to see us doing uh, that several people have asked me about is a pickleball court, either through that $45,000 grant for the parks or just out of the general fund. I can tell you we already have some uh, funds set aside in outdoor. I've already talked to them about two, three weeks ago to get one of these already converted. So that's already been in the works. This was in last year's budget or in, in the current year's budget. 
and um, I would not be opposed to either using the general fund or the general fund in correlation with the possible bond issue to build a new swimming pool. Well, what I, I could I request that at the budget meeting, these will definitely be things because Mr. Bridge will be there. They'll be for our budget stuff, you know, to to put out to him. But we can't just sit here amassing money. Our job is part of the reason that money is to benefit the citizens. Mm. And I think it's about time to start start doing that. I'm done. Thank you, Mr. Rice. I got my silver. You're good, <laughs> Mr. Rubel. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Kiko, but we already got a price to restrike one of those tennis courts for pickleball already. Yeah, I did. I got one in, so I think I'm around eight, 17, 18, uh, about eight, nine thousand to restripe one of these. Yeah. That, that's full. Yeah. Get the tennis court markings off of it and do it. So then I asked for another price from this Tip City place and waiting to hear back from him. I just I, I thought we had had this conversation. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I remember we you mentioned the nine thousand dollars that I. I, I've heard both is go ahead and just leave it to save, you know, to just put both stripes. So if someone wants to play tennis, they can play tennis or play pickleball too. But we have three courts over there. So if we left two tennis and one pickle or go two pickle, one tennis, we think more people are picking up pickleball. So we might convert the two to pickleball and leave the one tennis. Because I rarely see anybody playing tennis. It, it, it's, it, it's not as popular as it, definitely as it once was. Yeah. I just saw somebody the other night out there playing tennis oh, there were shorts. Some, I'm going, what? I'm when, I, when, I pulled cold. In, when I pulled in, they were playing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they used the back one, yeah. um, the, the, the double more than they used the front two. The front two actually get used. I see more, more kids out there playing. There's a sport where you use a soccer ball and you kick it over the net almost mm -hmm. like tennis, but yeah. it's with the soccer I've ball. Seen on it. But yep. I'm sure they can do that on a pickleball court just as easy. Good, sir. Yes, sir. Sorry. No, you're good. good. Mr. Rice. I'm good. Anyone else? Right. I had something I wanted to, I could have done it, I guess I could have done it in another business, but since you're the acting city manager and service director and um, what else can we put on you tonight? He's everything. A little bit of everything. I, I had a, something happen to me uh, last Wednesday that kind of sparked some interest again in some of the things I brought up uh, a couple years ago or a couple of times so over the past years I'm going to mention them to you so I was coming back into town from dinner and I'd seen and I wasn't even thinking what day it was but the door was open on 101 and it was dark I was like, oh my god there's someone left the door open so I you know flipped around and went back in and it was the end of, of uh, Mary's court that night it was on Wednesday so I was like oh gosh thank you so walk in you know, just said hi for a minute and asked the, the clerk and, and the deputies how everything was going and they said they had a, a high a high a high volume turnout that night for like 25 cases in one night which was for yeah exactly and I was like 25 cases I mean I've never even, I've never showed up for the mayor's court yet I mean because that's not my thing but um, I said what were the cases and they were you know uh, uh, property maintenance issues, you know, code violations, you know, tires stacked up on the side of the house, uh, leaky oil from a car that's never, you know, whatever. And uh, so, you know, I talked to them about that and it, you know, sparked my interest again on something I had asked about how, and I know you are a busy man, please do not take this the wrong way. Can we do something about the, the vehicle? Because here's the thing is, is we're, if we're going to be, ta um, you know, tagging people for, you know, stuff in their, in their yards or whatever it may be, the old uh, sweeper that's behind the mm -hmm. hut and stuff like it. Can we please get that gone? Yeah, we got Brian's going to help me get that listed on Gov Deals soon. Yeah, pretty soon. Okay. Do you, I mean, do, I, do you want? Do I need a motion to do it or? this week? No, no, no. It's it's already. Um, I think it's already through the original ordinance to do. I got a couple vehicles to get on ordinance, but I have about I think five of them that were already pre-approved to to get put on there. Right. Yeah, because after I'd walked in there and talked to them about all their cases, I was like, let me drive by and make sure that I'm not going to say something that's wrong, which they're still back there. So, yeah, that would be great if you could get rid of them sooner than later, because, I mean, it just it doesn't look good. Um, second is, is after going back there just for a second to see, that hut, how old is that? How, we've been in that hut since when? I mean, before, long before you were here, correct? Yeah. The, you know, and this kind of stems from our conversation about the Rite Aid building and I know that we didn't ask uh, Mr. Bridge to look at buying the building uh, just to see, you know, basically some information on it. You know, is it coming up for sale and things of that nature? 
Um, yeah, we've got our current city building now, the one right there by uh, Domino's, and we've done a little bit of work in that. You know, Randy moved from his real small office. We, we kind of chopped up the front of the building a little bit to make it a little bit bigger office for him. Um, so we spent some money there to, to, to make his, you know, his place of, of work more comfortable. Uh, now we got you know the new building 101 that we've spent some money on and that's you know that's one thing that i can't take back is that vote i really wish i'd never voted for that but it is what it is so we've got it um, now we're building three offices i think upstairs correct for you mr mm -hmm. uh bridge and uh the, the planning, planning director, director. Thank you. so we've been putting money into all these different places to make sure everybody else has you know comfortable offices and places that, to do their job properly and i know a while back we'd asked about getting the hut painted and you know, after I think you'd come back with a price tag on that, I forget what it was, but it was like, you know, let's not even paint it. It's it's time, you know, I haven't been in there in about two years, but I remember the last time I was in there and you know, I'm, I'd seen where their desks and offices were. I don't know if you guys have ever been in there. Mm -hmm. Where they take their breaks, I wouldn't even want to sit down in that building. It's like, <coughs> this is gross. I mean, it's not like nasty, like mold or anything, but it's just, it is what it is. I'm not saying it's- a housekeeper. It, no, it's it's just it's it's, in, an it's, an, it's an old building with you know you know little holes here and there, and I'm sure it's filled with you know rodents and things, little mice and things. I think it's time that you know most of our other facilities, you know, you've got water, you got waste, cemetery is not too bad, our city buildings are are fine. I think it's time that we need to look in our budget and get these guys a new building. Um, you know, if we're growing, we've got a you know we've got a new street sweeper coming. I think that. You know, it's just, it's time to give them a little bit of, you know, res and I'm not saying you guys don't respect them, but it's time to give them something that, that we've given you guys the okay to do with your new, newer office spaces, newer buildings, and things of that nature. Um, how, how big is that building? Just a guess. What, the hut? The hut. Probably. Uh, oh, shoot, I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, I mean, 50 by, 50 by 100? Oh, uh, it's, it's longer than 100. Okay. Um, shoot. That's okay. It's yeah, a big deal. Yeah, I so I, I went online, and I mean, I know the city has to do things in a different manner than a private individual, but just yep. looking up base prices for pole barns, and I know that's just for the structure itself. Mm -hmm. It's not for electrical or plumbing or heating and air and switches concrete, and lighting right. and concrete and permits and things of that nature. But I mean, what do you think the realist? And I'm gonna ask you both. I mean, I don't. What do you think something like that would cost? Is half a mil? Three quarters? This was four hundred thirty thousand for a shelter. Right. So you're probably talking. Five. Yeah, you, yeah. I, I, it's Five, hard to six, throw. Depend on because we need we need concrete flooring. It's not just four inch. Right. It'll be eight inch concrete. Six, yeah. It's um. I mean, it's hard to put a tag on. I can just tell you that just starting there, you're, you're going to be minimum four thirty because that's just a two thousand square foot where that's probably twice the size, right. maybe three times. And then and then you got to go with. Um, usually an 18 foot interior ceiling, so we can put a 14 foot garage door on it. Now you're really jacking the price up. Right, and I understand, because I mean, you've yep. got a lot of heavy equipment that goes in and out of there. I just, you know, looking at it for, you know, two things, like I said, you know, before, you know, when you're coming into town, everybody sees it, and it's like, we've got all these newer homes that are gonna be going in, it's like, I think we should, you know, one, we should have, you know, our facilities look a little bit better than that, especially coming in on a main road. But the fact that we've put, a, decent amount of money into office space for administration that I think we need to show them a little bit of, you know, love to give them a facility that they feel proud and, and safe and comfortable to work in. Um, so I don't know. What, what if they like nostalgia? <laughs> Well, <laughs> it's possible. I mean, it's so old, it might be yeah, worth 15. money. I, I worked in out of both back in my day. I know, I know. It's not changed. Or so save half a million dollars. Build a new fire station thinking of our building. Yeah. Right. <laughs> So I, I did want to say one more thing, but before I do, is anybody Build else? Build a new anything? firehouse and they can have our building. <laughs> I, I think on that, that that'd be something we would need to discuss in the budget talks. Oh, most definitely. And, and, and see no, what we can do. The, uh, I, I think a building that would be suitable in for future use, you'll probably look at close to six mil, you think? For what building? I'm sorry? For the hut, no. to replace the hut for You're future. looking at the a mil. Oh, no. it wouldn't be six mil. No, you're you're sure looking this how much? Th this was 430. You double the height, you're probably at I don't, think, I don't know, I'm just spitballing. Residential runs 175 to 200 a square foot. Yeah. Commercials probably, let's say, 300 a square foot. Um, 
I mean, you would, I, I can't really spitball number. Right. No, I got you. I wouldn't. And, uh, but I think that would that should be. We should talk about that in the budget talks when we get to there. How being that you work in there and you work in there and your supervisor. I mean, how much time do you actually spend in the building itself? I mean, mm -hmm. when I think street department and maintenance, I think let's go work the streets and maintenance and. So I mean, how much actual physical time do they spend in in the hut on a normal? I mean, let's call it their half hour lunch plus before and after. So I mean, max uh, an hour and some change okay. in the office space. Yeah, but the rest of it's out in and out with equipment. So okay. Is one more question for me? Go ahead. Uh, is all the equipment inside the hut now? I mean, does any of it sit outside at night? Depends on what we got going on. Like, uh, no, usually almost all of it's inside. Okay. Um, but we may have a, some adjustment when I start to tear down the old section of the garage, the down by the well folk because of the roof. Um, we'll lose the just storage for the um, uh, Dura Patcher and the Leaf Machine, the two towables. So there's a room up here to move that stuff to it, to put inside up here? Um, what we're thinking about doing is moving some of it down in our uh, thing at wastewater, but no, that's where, with the with the sweeper, bucket truck, backhoe, summertime yes, wintertime makes it difficult because the back truck has to sit inside so it don't freeze. Right. And uh, we looked at trying to get uh, maybe wastewater their own facility and build one of these, and then we would combine the two, so that way it's wastewater storage street. So it's been in the works to try and figure out. You know, the street department themselves or whatever um, cost to build that building could be shared with wastewater if they can store their bucket or bucket, their vac truck, jet truck in there, and some of their equipment as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Bond. The, wh what is the building behind the doctor's office used for? Building behind the. the uh, like oh, 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 oh. The, that's the city garage. The the newer part of it is. Okay. The the older part closest to him that looks uh, the longer rectangular part. That's just storage. Okay. So do we have need for cold storage and heated storage? Is that what you're saying with the vac truck? The vac truck, yeah. So the hut is heated storage. Okay. And then down there is really not heated storage. It's uh. It's, it's more cold. We have a little divider in between the new section of the garage and the old. Okay. I probably need to come take a look at that stuff because I, I haven't been in there to know, to be able to talk a little more. Our problem with the HUD is it's an arch, so we don't get to move things tight against the wall. So yeah. we have to kind of... Well, I'm just thinking there's some, you know, if it's just a matter of uh, cold storage to keep stuff out of the elements, yeah. there's some ways of doing that. Oh yeah, they're, they're, you can just straight full structure with that. Old hoop buildings and things yep. like that that work really well and are fairly inexpensive, but the heated side of it throws a little different yep. piece to it. So, um, but I may try and catch up with you just to yeah, shoot me a email, shoot me a message or something. See what we're looking at, but I I agree. I mean, I've always been of the opinion. When you have guys working for you, you want to give them the best possible tools to do their job that you can. And um, even before I, you know, I just felt uh, being in leadership, be, you, you give the guys that are working with you and for you better than what you have, if, if need be, to make sure they're, they're able to function. And, uh, you know, if it, if it means we don't spend as much on some office buildings and things, but we need to get the right uh, facility for these guys to be able to do their jobs well and everything, and it's probably something we can talk about. And I agree with Mr. Lindsay, you know, it's probably in the budget talks is when we need to start doing some planning, but, um, yeah. Good. Ms. Harris, what do you, uh, just out of curiosity, I mean, for, I mean, if he mentioned possibly splitting something like that, if it was something that could be shared, could those departments afford to do something like that in the near future? So, because a lot of the funds are based on specific revenue that goes into them, the street fund um, 
is going to be obligated for the street sweepers. So there's not a lot of extra. There's a little wiggle room. Um, who else is in the street? The hut, pretty much the street. Yeah, just streets. Yeah. So it's it. You're going to be talking more general fund. Okay. And, and that is um, as we go into our budgets, we do have um, some money to allocate for the um, well, the water line. A quarter of a million out of and that comes out of general fund. Um, so there's there's some big things down the pike, but you know it's definitely something we'll, they'll look into, and I'll I'll look at budget. I know you're busy, Howie. I don't know where this will go, but mm -hmm. I'd like to make a motion to ask you to look into some rough numbers for a new building. I don't need a motion. I just I'll call CNN to kind of give me or someone to give me a. Uh, a square footage and say I need heated with probably a 20 by 30 maybe office you know por portion in it with two or three um, you know 14 foot by uh, 16 foot doors you know that type of thing I mean just to get some rough numbers it so you could do that before we get into too deep a discussion for but uh I can probably I can probably get some I can probably get something ballpark by the sixth. Okay, and then I'll take that motion back. Okay. All right, thank you. All right, I'm done. Anyone else for Mr. Kitko? All right. All right, moving on. Uh, committee reports, non comments from members of the public. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, anything, uh, please go to the podium. We need your name and address, and please try to keep it to five minutes. My name is Kate McVay. This is my husband, Craig McVay. We lived at 211 West Jackson Street, fairly new to New Carlisle. Um, but I did have a comment about the heritage of flight, just something for next year, is uh, we actually are members at the airport. And there is one street, Pike Street, that runs behind the Rite Aid that was not closed off when the airplane started to come down the road. So. Craig and I were sent out from the airport to direct traffic, which is not a job for amateurs, but professionals. And we did manage to keep people from turning the corner and going into the path of the airplanes, but nobody was happy with us, and I got yelled at by somebody's grandma. No. <laughs> so, and it, it's not your fault because we have since learned that the representative from the airport only attended one of the planning meetings. But I wanted to say it here tonight, so for next year, just, and not all the time, but maybe just while the airplanes are on the road coming up and when they start going back down, just because that's not safe for the airplanes or the tractors or the cars or the people. Anyway, that's all I had to say for tonight. All right, thank you. Yeah, we, that was one of the biggest problem spots, and we usually try to have someone there. Uh, we've already, even though we haven't met yet, we're gonna have a, we're gonna have a deputy there I think around the around the clock, or at least the three days at that particular spot, just because even when our committee members are there, they just drive in the grass and go around us. They don't care who we are. So, um, so yeah, it'll be addressed next year. Thanks. Yeah, I, I, I know a couple of people are telling us put up bigger. We have a huge do not enter, yeah. a left turn arrow on Pike, and it just doesn't matter. They, Unless there's a cop there, they'll go where they want. Yep. Yeah. Anyone? Janelle. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, yes, you might inform them that that is not a city function. That's a, a private type function. Yeah, because they think that it belongs to the city. It does not. Yeah, I don't know if you got that when I was saying we. I meant <clears throat> committee, not the city, because that's put on by a private committee, not the city. So, Janelle Zimmerman, two nineteen Prentice Drive. Uh, I hate to make a complaint about it too. <laughs> Because I, it, everything was wonderful. I, I'm just so proud of that committee and all that they do. They work so hard. But we, we did have a really hard time getting to church Sunday. Always before, there's been a spot down there where they move the thing over so we can get into the parking lot. And that wasn't there this time. And different roads were closed that weren't before. And people really had a hard time. You know, they had to park at CVS and Rite Aid and a lot of other places. Just, and I think part of it's because we didn't call and remind people that we needed to get in. They did say before they called and said, you know, we need to have some spot where we can get in. Mm -hmm. Usually I think it was just a thing we could just pull over during church time to get in. Right. But something we might want to consider so we can 
get in there a little bit easier. But but the festival was wonderful. So I saw you there more than everybody, anybody. You were there every day. Well, just a little, and boy, the way my knees have been, I didn't think I'd make it, but I did. <laughs> So, well, thank you, Janelle. We'll uh, keep that in mind when we get back to it early next year. So, anyone else? All right, moving on to uh, resolutions and ordinances. Ms. Burner, if you would, please. Yes, hold on. Yes. Okay, we have ordinance 2023-55, introduction tonight, public hearing in action on November 6th. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract for insurance with USI Insurance Services, LLC, representing the public entities pool of Ohio for the admin administration of said policy. We have ordinance 2023-56, introduction tonight, public hearing in action on November 6th. An ordinance authorizing the city manager or the director of public service assistant city manager to enter into a consultant agreement with Choice One Engineering for the decorative streetlight LED upgrade project. Uh, PID number 118645. And we have ordinance 2023 57, introduction tonight, public hearing in action on November 6th. An ordinance amending section 1040.18 of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle regarding water connection charges. And other business open for discussion on city related business. Council, any other related business? Ms. Eggleston. I've gotten several phone calls and I've noticed it myself. The number, <clears throat> is there any way we can put signs in Smith Park and along the bike trail that dogs are to be leashed? That'd be a question for you. <laughs> I'll double check the sign because we put, I thought we just put a new sign up, but I'll, yeah, we usually have the sign up where it says clean up after your pet waste blah, blah blah or something like that so but you're talking about loose dogs like people yeah. are walking and they can yeah, like maybe people just get into the park and taking their dog off the leash yeah uh, other people are afraid to bring their dogs to the park to walk them because i guess it'll be come down to an enforcement um and i can get with brian and the deputies because if we well obviously we don't have a you know some people park over here by the tennis court so i think we usually have signs at that parking lot that parking lot in here if they don't see that and they're come walking the path, yeah. I, I mean, I've seen them out there throwing a Frisbee or whatever. Um, You'd have to look at the code on the book. It, there is one there that dogs are required to be on leash. Okay. It, okay. It's just, uh, I'm sure many people come in, pull in, and walk down the path and don't even pay attention right. to the signs. Good? Yep. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pickett. Mr. Roadwell? I was just going to say there is one at the uh, Lake Street entrance. Oh, okay. That is it was supposed to be leashed? Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have something, Mr. Cook? Um, I would like to make a motion to allow myself to do a proclamation for a city, a city employee or employees in the coming meetings. I move. So move. Second. So I made the motion, so you mean you would second? Oh, second. Motion by me, second by Mr. Rice. Proclamate to do a, a proclamation for city a city employee or employees. Okay. I don't want to play. <laughs> and I'm not a city employee. Per se. Can I ask a question? Sure. Why is it as the mayor do you have to ask if you can make a proclamation? The rules were changed. The rule was changed. I don't know how many years ago it was. Four or five years ago. Just the. Uh, I always thought that was. I, I just always thought that weird. was something that the mayor did on there. Uh, there was an issue where. Uh, Usually. Oh, yes. oh. Mr. Mayor. Sir. I'd like to amend that motion. To. Would be my motion to amend. Oh, you want to make a motion to amend it. Yeah. Okay. So you can't, I, I can amend your motion. Oh, my motion or a new motion? Your motion. Okay. Uh, I'd like to amend the motion that the mayor should not have to ask council to do a proclamation for citizens or it, it's always been his prerogative. I think that needs to be returned to the mayor. It, uh, I just think he should have that lead way. They, they've always had it until whenever. So 
Do you get that motion? Well, no, because that's not really amending the motion. That's, okay. You're wanting to change So you're, the, you would like to make a new council? motion. Yeah, I think it on top of a motion. So we can vote on his, and then you can yeah, make okay. a new, because that's not really okay. changing okay. anything he said. No, I didn't change You have to amend the said, rules of council? Yeah, I believe so. Is that in you get, you, I think yeah. council approved the rules of council at the beginning of the year. Right. Okay. And so you and guys that, would have to amend rules of council because I think it's in there, I right? Go back and look. Yeah. Okay. All right. Go ahead with his motion, and then I'll I'll, I'll make the motion. Okay. So motion by me, second by Mr. Vice Mayor. Okay. <clears throat> and I can let Mr. Bridge know that what you what you're going to bring up, so maybe we have the. Oh, I'm going to make the motion when he's done. Okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Roadwold? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. That passes 7-0. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Sir. Now I'd like to make the motion where you do not need to ask council to do a proclamation or, or whatever it is you'd like to do. That should be mayor's prerogative. Should he state change rules? Wouldn't that be council? a motion to amend the rules? If it's in rules of council, yes, you're correct. Well, Thank yeah, you. I believe it's. In I forgot it was in rules of council. If to amend rules of council to allow the mayor to do pretty much what the mayor wants to do with proclamations and stuff, does that make sense? Yeah, it does. So then we he needs to bring the um, was that under was that resolution to accept the rules of council? I think it took a resolution to accept rules of council. So we'll have to have a new resolution drafted to amend those rules of councils to eliminate that. Because I don't think it was yes. a straight motion to for rules. All right. All right. Mr. Mayor. Sir. I make a motion that we have a resolution at the next meeting to give you your authority back. There'll be somebody. And, it won't be one. Well, and, and then if Mr. Bond wants to second that, that'll be great. Okay. So, so basically, we're making a motion so at the next meeting, Randy have that resolution, resolution ready. To, to amend rules of council. Council with a resolution. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Bottom okay. line is to allow the, the mayor. Well, if you second it or somebody seconds it, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so who was the second? Um, Mr. Bond. Mr. Bond. Okay. Ben Bond. That's like saying it. Okay. Uh, Councilman Eggleston? No. Councilman Cook? No. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Roadwald? No. Mayor Lowry? Uh, no. Vice Mayor Grimm? No. Councilman Bond? Yes. All right. So you don't want to restore your authority? That fails to five. I'm going to be here. Yeah, well. All right. Okay, so I don't need to do anything. Yeah. <laughs> I was John a bunch of stuff down. <laughs> All right. Anything else, Council? Move to adjourn. Second. Motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by Mr. What? There have isn't. Any? You have on your executive session. Oh, oh yes. Oh. Uh, my apologies. Yes, we will not be going into unless council had something I don't know about. Since Mr. Bridge wasn't here, um, we have no need to go into it. I apologize. Well, oh, so the motion stands. Okay. You adjourn. Who was the second to? Mr. Okay. Vice Mayor. Councilman Bond. Uh, yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Roadwell? Dan? Did you say yes? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grant? Yes. Motion to adjourn except 7-0. Right. Have a good evening, everyone.